This is the Zelos Horizon GMT V2. So this shipped out pretty quickly and I was surprised how fast it got delivered. Direct from Asia. Let's crack this guy open. All right. There's that Zelos wooden box. Little paper covering, Zelos logo. Let's see if we can't. That's in there tight. There we go. Okay. So in a wooden box. It's a light wood, but that's nice. That's a nice touch for uh, this price point. No, no padding in the box, just a watch roll. Uh, which, okay, fine, whatever, I can reuse the box. Little magnetic uh, closures. That's kind of nice, it won't uh, just flop open on you. Not so bad, little like cigar style box. Zelos ship all their watches in these watch rolls. This is my first Zelos, but I've seen a number of them before. Uh, they have a booth pretty much every year at the Wind Up Watch Fair in New York, probably in San Francisco as well. Um, I've seen some reviews on these and I guess they changed the color of this watch roll. There's definitely, there's definitely an odor to this watch roll. It has that like, I don't know, industrial factory, almost like a fishy smell to it. So this is sewn on here, this strap, so you won't lose it. There's an embossed Zelos logo right here, like a stamped into the leather Zelos logo. It is two types of leather too, there's like a suede interior and like a hard leather outside. All right, inside our watch roll, we've got our Looks like international warranty card here, copper. One year limited warranty. I'm not entirely sure how many of this watch was produced, but I have number 15 and when I bought mine, it was the last one, they were then sold out. So if it's 15, that's a pretty low production quality, quantity. Here is a standard waffle dive strap with a big old Zelos custom clasp on it. Not so bad, not my thing, but not so bad. And then what you're here for, there she is, meteor on meteor. Let's get the plastics off and size it and have a look. All right, plastic off, I think I got all of it. This is one of those watches where they have just tons of plastic and I got this sized up for myself. Um, this is the obviously the meteorite on meteorite version so they make a ton of different versions of this watch. Uh, a lot of sunburst styles, a lot of different colors, a lot of funky bezel options here. This one is a meteorite dial so you can see that there. Those reflections bouncing off of it all of which ways. And then a meteorite bezel, which is a little harder to see, but that inlay is meteorite uh, as well. And so, you know, it's just this really beautiful gray that plays with the light. Um, they did make a number of uh, the V1 that had a meteorite and the V2 as well. And they even did a blue meteorite. I'm not sure how they did that. But these are actually, you know, uh, a stone that fell from the sky that is now cut. And so the makeup of the metal, um, I think upon impact, changes. This so it gets really hot when it's coming down out of the sky. And then uh, upon impact, changes into this kind of crystalline form. And so you get these really beautiful, unique dials. Supposedly none of them are the same. That makes sense. I guess they're slicing them out of a piece of stone. Um, and so you get these beautiful dials. Now on this one, what you can see is... They've applied indices and they've painted indices as well. So a little minute marking track there. Um, 
that logo, that Zelos logo is applied and that is great. I love an applied logo. It kind of does disappear into the shininess of the, um, the dial here, but even that is kind of nice that you get almost a unbranded dial unless you're really looking for it. What else on the dial? We got um, GMT written in orange and then 200 meter, 660 feet written in red. Right away, this is, I think, uh, one of the very few missteps with this watch. Just write it in orange. It's the only red text on the dial. I love red text when it comes to depth ratings, but in this case, it just doesn't sit right. Everything else is orange. The GMT hand is orange. The GMT track is orange. And then besides that, it's either silver or gray. So why throw in a, a third color, essentially, when uh, it's really unnecessary? Beyond that, uh, you've got that printed minute track around the outside. That is printed and it is printed in loom, so you do get luminous minute track. And then if you're looking here, you can see there is your GMT track right there in orange and black in that kind of, uh, that rehaut, that uh, edge of the dial space. Some people have commented that it's really not that easy to see and looking head on to the watch, they're right, it's not that easy to see. Something else that people have commented about, and we'll move to the, the bezel on this, is that uh, many of the bezels that they did in this version, the V2, are not that easy to read. And again, they're right, looking at this bezel, not that easy to read. Um, so besides the GMT track and the GMT bezel not being that easy to read, everything else is really easy to read. The minute track glows, it's clear, the uh, Every 10 minute marker applied indice is very clear and uh, really well uh, polished on the edges, so it really does shine. The angles that they've given this are, are just tremendous. The three triangle markers for 9, 12, and 3 o'clock, so you can tell which way is up and what's what in the dark. That's great. I love that. Lots of loom applied. A really long minute hand, so you can, you can you know, easily tell what minute it is. Although I'll say, given the width of the minute hand, you can't always tell uh, what minute it is because it blocks out two minutes almost in the middle of the transition. Um, another criticism of this guy, which doesn't bother me, but I could see it bothering other people, is that the number of minute markers is not even. And so where you've got triangles, you've got three, and when you've got two baton markers, you've got four. So between 12 and one, you have three indices. In between one and two, you have four indices. And then at six, you have nine. So from um, this marker to this marker, it's a continuous string of uh, minute marks. I, I like that. That doesn't bother me, but I could see how it would bother someone. Uh, at six, you're looking at that six o'clock date. Six o'clock date is my preference for all watches. I wish they had done a gray date wheel. Every other model of this uh, watch, so every other colorway has a color matched date wheel. The one that I happen to want doesn't have a color matched date wheel. I guess that's sort of on me, but um, would have been would have been a nice thing. Uh, the Minute hand, as I mentioned before, it kind of thick, but it, it does the job. I'm sure it glows like, uh, you know, a torch in, in, in the night. And then uh, the hour hand, same thickness, just shorter, still lines up with that uh, hour track really well. That last two things are the, the second hand, which is uh, this kind of trapezoid marker at the end. I, I don't have any problem with it. It looks nice. It's not uh, my preference for a minute hand, but it's it's nice. And then the GMT hand going all the way to the outer track and making it easy to read if you can see the GMT ring what hour it is. Um, now, to address the bezel again, you can see here that it's marked every... So the even hours are marked in, in numerals and then there's a hash for the uh, odd hours. That whole track is loomed. So at night you do see that and I think that's BGW9 in there. So you get blue for anything to do with the um, GMT, and then green for everything else. 
um, and I will throw in a loom shot. So there's that loom shot for you. You can see here that uh, every single indice is loomed. You can see the differentiation in color between the GMT hand, which is that small arrow tip, and the uh, hour and minute and second hands, which are the green glow. And you can see that uh, the outer ring, the bezel, is blue as well and loomed. So uh, every single little thing that you could possibly want loomed on this watch is loomed. Looks like it's glowing pretty bright to me. Um, I would imagine that the blue glow will disappear far more quickly than the green glow and that you'll lose those individual minute indice glow much before you're going to lose the hour markers, especially the 9, 12, and the 3 o'clock markers. Continuing, we've got the rest of the case. So these are short lugs. I like a short lug. It means that you get a kind of a squat watch which usually fits more wrists unless you have a really large wrist. And they do a really good job at, taper, at tapering down to the end here and also angling down. So there's a whole curvature that this watch case follows. Now the case itself is 11 millimeters thick and you get an extra two millimeters from that box domed uh, sapphire it, the sapphire is beautiful. It'll easily slip under a cuff that will just slide right under there. Um, the case is brushed with these chamfer edges, both on top and on bottom. That looks really nice. Uh, you can see that along the edge here, there are some sections of the bezel that are not coined, but the rest of it is kind of a coin edge bezel. Not the easiest thing to grip, but then this is a GMT watch, and so it's not a dive watch. You're not trying to do it with gloves. It's for travel. You don't move it frequently. You kind of set it and forget it, and so it's just not that big of a deal. Uh, if, you, if you go around to the side here, these are 20 millimeter uh, lugs, and it's got a, this one happens to be on a really nice uh, bracelet, and then along the back you have a see-through case back now I'm not a fan of see-through case backs they do this really well they don't make it bulge it doesn't really add to the thickness there's a sapphire uh, see-through on that back there so a sapphire piece of glass to see into it this is uh, an ETA movement it's the Elabre uh, grade of that movement which means you get that perlage and the striping as well as a custom rotor um, on the bottom there. That's a better angle for you. So there you go, ETA 2893. And uh, you can see there's Zelos GMT. This is, oh, there you go, there's the answer to the number. They've made 50 of these. This is 15 out of 50. All of the Zelos watches are done in these limited numbers and stainless steel sapphire. So all the Zealous watches are done in these limited numbers. They uh, generally have a pre-sale before the go launch, uh, launch of the watch, and then once the pre-sale is over, the price goes up. There's really no reason if you're into one of these watches to wait until the price goes up. Just buy it or don't. I mean, uh, you know, it's a cycle for them. So if they're gonna make a V2 of a watch, it'll be the same thing. It'll have a pre-sale price and then it'll have the actual launch price. You can get on their, their mailing list, they'll let you know whenever they have um, new watches coming out. That's pretty much every watch company. The Crown has a great little etched logo into it. This is a laser etch, it looks like, logo. Uh, and it's that contrast of the laser etching, the matte laser etching, and then the Zelos logo really works out well. It is definitely grippy enough with its coin edging. Um, it is unguarded because it's a GMT watch, but it is still screw down. And that's part of this being a uh, 200 meter watch. So this is really an all round sport watch. It's, it's a great uh, watch for the summer. It's a great watch for all the time, really. And you can swap it out for that. Uh, well, really any 20 millimeter strap is a pretty versatile watch in, in gray and in a number of other colors, you can get some great uh, combos going on there. So moving on from the case and the dial 
to the bracelet. So solid end links, solid links here. Um, this is a really comfortable bracelet. So it is screw pins uh, and that is secure and it is kind of a mark of quality. Um, these are single-sided screw pins, unlike the Omegas where you get a screw on either side that needs to be held in place while you unscrew it. Um, this is just one pin that screws in. Still really nice. They did a really good job with this clasp, so it tapers down from that 20 millimeter uh, lug width down to I think about 18 here, and then probably back up to 20 for this, this clasp. So this is a flip lock clasp, and what you're seeing here is the Zellos logo etched into it, and then you flip it up, and it's got a double pusher release system, so if you push just one, it doesn't work. You do have to push both pushers to have that release, so that's pretty secure. You've got that metal deployment. This is a milled clasp. They did a good job there. It has lots of micro adjust positions. In fact, there's so many that I feel like it, it goes further than I think two full links. So two full link lengths is covered in this micro adjust. So you could use this with a really small wrist. Uh, that makes it a pretty versatile watch for, for different sizes. Um, I had to take out, I normally have to take out two to three links. I had to take out four with this one, so it is definitely made for people with larger wrists to be able to wear it. Um, they are oyster style links. They are, you know, it's, it's fully brushed, but they seem a little more shiny on the outside, and then on the edges you've got polish. And it's definitely rounded. It's not like a chamfer really, but it's definitely rounded on the edges, and I think that makes it more comfortable. Um, and then there's no dive extension, but it's not a dive watch, so that makes sense. You could really, you could take out a, a pretty good number. So if I took out two from each side, you can see there's an additional three links that you could take out and make this a really small, uh, bracelet. As far as this bezel's action goes, it has 48 clicks. They are clear, they're distinct. It's not super difficult to move. You can you can easily grip it with that little bit of coin edge that it has. The one detractor to the bezel with the exception of the obvious, uh, you can't read it necessarily, but the, the other detractor for this bezel is that it does have a little bit of up and down, left and right play to it, which some people, they don't care. I've even seen comments saying, why does that matter? Everybody gets hung up on bezel play, but it's just a mark of quality, and on this guy, they miss that mark just just a little bit. That little bit of play, you know, uh, you could say that, well, that little bit of play allows it to take a knock and not pop off, or that it makes it more robust. Sure, I have plenty of watches that don't have play, and uh, I've never had a bezel come off. Let's do a wrist shot on this guy. So on my seven inch wrist, this is just incredibly comfortable. It's, uh, you know, I, I can't complain about the way it feels at all. I generally wear my watches pretty loose. I usually wear them pretty low. Uh, and this does, does a good job at floating because it's so smooth and it fits just really, really well. I think that it would fit on bigger wrists. I think it would even be more comfortable for people who with smaller wrists who are used to having watches be too big for them. That dial, the, the dynamic nature of that dial and the lighting is just phenomenal. You don't see it as much with the bezel because it has to have a, an inlay over top of it to stop it from being damaged or scratched, but it is really nice. So I guess the last thing to address is the actual movement and crown itself. And it is a screw down crown, like I said before. The first position pulls it out to the GMT and the date. The second position is the time setting. It is hacking. It has a smooth uh, movement. This is a really, really nice movement here. Um, I will say though that this crown stem and crown has a little play. You see that there? And so there there are other watches in my collection that have the same exact GMT movement. No play on the crown stem. 
Um, that is something that I would like Zellos to address, maybe if they do a V3 of this. Make this a more secure... I don't even know if it's the stem itself so much as the crown just floating on the stem. That's something they could work on. Tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, you know, is there a better colorway that they put out? That blue uh, or aqua one that they put out is pretty nice. Uh, is this too far off from Zello's normal lineup to be kind of comfortable in what they're doing? I, I think they did a great job. I'll throw up some stats right here. Thanks for watching, guys.